Whether you're fly fishing in a stream, getting those ankles wet, or deep in the ocean casting nets, fish nerds. Fish nerds. Fish nerds. It's a podcast. Hello and welcome to the Fish Nerds, a show about fish, fishing, and eating fish. I'm Clay Grove, Chief Executive Fish Nerd, Licensed Fishing Guide, your best friend, and I'm super happy to be here today. I'm recording this uh, at 5 o'clock in the morning on Thursday, the day before we release the show, because I'm going away, but I'm here for you, and I'm out of coffee but I'm going to be okay. Today's show would be a little bit of a palate cleanser from last week's show. We had a lot of fun last week, but uh, we also had a lot of feedback, a lot of good and bad, and uh, we warned you. <laughs> Just so I'm saying, anyone who had a negative view on last week's show, you were warned. Uh, we told you it was uh, not safe for work. Um, but, you know, we did it. We'll do it again, too, because it was a lot of fun, and we had some great guests. If you didn't hear it already, uh, go back. It was a good one. Uh, unless you're a kid, then do not listen to last week's show. Now, on this week's show, moving forward, uh, this week's show, we are super lucky because we have Anna on Ice, who is a Instagram sensation ice fisher lady, and John King is bringing us an interview with her. We are going to feature a news story uh, about a crappie worth $15,000. And we're going to announce, we're going to announce the winner of our Fishy Disasters contest. So really exciting. And we're not going to spend a lot of time chatting here because I want to get you right into the good stuff. So we're going to start right away with Anna on Ice. Uh, as interviewed by the Crappie Hippie, who is the co-founder of Glasswater Angling for a Better Outdoors. And they make lead-free fishing lures. And we at the Fish Nerds are huge fans of uh, environmentally good stuff like lead-free fishing lures. And you can go to glasswaterleadfreelures.com to get your, uh, your, your glasswater angling lures today. So here's that interview. Every group of fishing friends has the one. They are the one who catches bigger fish and more fish more often. Their reputation grows, and soon their skills are known throughout the neighborhood, the lake community, your small town, or school. Sometimes they're acknowledged in the media, but mostly their prowess, humility, and patient grace on the water is recognized and praised by those who know them or know of them. We call these fishers local legends. That was our live-in blues guy, Isaiah Beard Stubble Medlock. Catch Isaiah's new record, Lord, Please Harvest the Corns Off These Toes, on WTF Records. And now, local legends with the Crappie Hippie and Anna on Ice. Hey, everybody, it's Crappie Hippie, your tree-hugging redneck from eastern Kansas. And tonight on Local Legends, I have uh, a young lady that is moving beyond the local legendary status and is a climbing rock star of ice fishing. Uh, real pleasure to have you on the show. Welcome, Anna Lesishin uh, of Anna on Ice. Thank you, John. I'm excited to be here in that uh, very, very kind intro. That was. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm telling you, it's uh, if uh, we're going to show the uh, we're, we're going to tell these listeners all about how you've moved from uh, here in the past, basically year, 18 months from, um, you know, being an IG uh, person on um, with Outward Bound TV and now a partnership with Nicole Stone. And and uh, we're starting to um, the the uh, uh, women's uh, wham and and all this stuff going on. So. Um, let's do it. I was going to do past, present, future, but we're going to go with the present because I can't stand it. Too much exciting stuff on your Instagram feed. <laughs> um, let's talk about your ice fishing season. Now, um, the first big trip I followed was to Wisconsin Falls. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Far Northern Manitoba. Yes. Far Northern Manitoba, uh, ice fishing for walleye. And an assortment of other species too. Right. Yeah, I saw you call it caught a burbot, and I, I want to talk about that here. Um, and uh, you guys, uh, you, you've been there a couple times, I think, from what I can see. 
Yeah, yeah. I've been um I've been lucky enough actually in 2019 I got to go to Wakusco Falls three different times. So <clears throat> I feel very spoiled um in that sense. Our uh our great buddy and uh lodge owner Brian Bogdan up there um was gracious enough to yeah, let us let us come up that many times and I am just itching to the next time I can get back up there. It oh, uh that that fishery is just there's there's just no comparison uh, when it comes to multi species oh, angling um, in northern Manitoba. I mean, the fishing of that magnitude is just un unsurpassable in my mind. Wow, wow! I mean, they just getting the um, now. I'm really really revved up because you always have your fantasy trips and this and that. And um, I'm don't ice fish a lot here in Kansas, but. Um, I've met so many people doing fish nerds that do ice fish, love ice fishing. I, I'm starting to um, slowly be absorbed into the ice fishing scene, um, but I will have to travel to do it. But I'd love to take Clay and Vinny up there and, uh, you know, do some ice fishing for in a place where it's um, just crazy like that. Well, and I, I think that's kind of the, you know, Nicole and I, um, we went – uh, this time last year. And then we were, of course, there early ice this November. And I think that's kind of, you know, the biggest, I wouldn't say stigma, but that's kind of the opinion that we're trying to break is that these kinds of trips, that kind of fishing are so much more accessible than I think a lot of people think of it and think of it as they think of it as, oh, you know, it's a once in a lifetime trip or you're having to travel really far. And really when you break it down, it it's it's world class fishing that you can do inexpensively and you it, you know it's it's sure it's a day in the car each way but it's with fishing like that it's completely worth it well i think so and actually though i'm i'm thinking you know they come from new hampshire i come, i'm in the um, just outside the kansas city metro area so it's a little more than a day however it's definitely doable. I mean, look, let's um, let's just you know, just tell uh, tell the listeners if you're you you come out of Minnesota to get up there, um, what does uh, Brian charge, and you know what would it cost an angler? Let's shout out for Brian a little bit. Let's talk about his camp and uh, tell people how they can get uh, get on up there and meet him and get on some fish. Yeah, well, you know, for rates and and so forth, you know, everything is on their website. They have a fantastic okay. website. Um, so that would be Wakusco Falls Lodge. Wakusco um, Falls Lodge. I'm going to say it again. <laughs> yeah, Wakusco Falls Lodge. Yes. Uh, there's I, there's only there's only one. So. <laughs> <laughs> there's only. Um, and yeah, I, I mean, there's there's a co the accommodations are everything. You know, it's 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 all the comforts of home. Um, and you know, you have, you can have the option to have, you know, all your meals, uh, through them, everything. So you're, you're definitely not going, you know, super rustic. You can't, I mean, if you want to rough it, you certainly can. Um, but they, you know, they have just these just beautiful cabins that can fit large groups, you know, small groups, everything. And then you have the option to do fully guided, uh, trips out on their, their bodies of water there. And, then you can also do self-guided as well. So um, it's really a, it's it's kind of the trip of what you make it. So you there's you know there's lots of bodies of water. Obviously, Wakusco Lake is is right where they are on the falls there. Uh, but there's other bodies of water in the area too that we that we fish quite frequently. So you can, I mean, right down the road there's massive rainbow trout, brook trout, oh. um, and you know then you can go over to to Reed Lake where you know you can catch monster pike monster lake trout um it's all it's like i said hey guy guy vinny vinny claire are you hearing this monster pike <laughs> monster lake trout lake trout vinny it's monster all in lake. one you can't go wrong oh fantastic fantastic i um so that but they do have housekeeping plans so if you want to drag your own food and do your own thing and keep your own hours and just rent a cabin basically um it's okay right Exactly. Yep. Yeah. You certainly can. We, we stayed, Nicole and I actually stayed in a cabin that had a full kitchen, everything. So you can wow. certainly do everything on your own um, if you so wish. So like I said, I mean, it's, or if you, you know, if you want, you know, f all your meals, everything through them, it, that's an option as well. So I would say give Brian and Alyssa a call, uh, just kind of, you know, give them, give them the rundown of what you're looking for. And they, they typically have all the abilities to accommodate. They, they are just the kindest 
sweetest people I've ever met. And um, Nicole and I always joke that if there was a Brian and Alyssa Bogdan super fan club, we would be the first. Right. We, we would be that. We would be the the founding members because. It, they just don't make they just don't make them like them. They're just fantastic. Oh right, so a real home away from home. And um, I thought one of your was it at was Costco where your strategy was to go with a guy for a couple of days and then kind of wing it on your own for a while. Yeah, so we um, we've done that up there, and then um, we the the most recent trip that we just did um, that was kind of our approach. So we did uh, we actually just got back last week from uh, Lake Winnipeg. So, um, also a fantastic, uh, Manitoba destination. Well, so we'll get to we, that. And we'll get to that in a minute. We're going to oh, yeah, take I, them we'll in order it. because I can't, I, 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 I've got a lot to talk about there, but the, the, the next one that really followed was, was the trip to, I think Red Lake. Uh, yes. When you yep. teamed up with, with your buddy, Nicole, and then invited, uh, Natalie Dillon along. Yes. And, uh, and that was a great piece. That was a great film on Nicole's channel. And, um, I love the cooking and I love the whole, the whole thing, um, <laughs> passing the baggy of minnows around <laughs> and all, <laughs> all that stuff. Um, I, um, I love the fact that you got into the, um, the way Red Lake's changed and, and the different species and, and how the crappie fishing, for example, used to be about quantity. Now it's not so much, but they're running really big. I mean, those slabs are regular dinner plates you were pulling through that hole. And it's just that's yeah. Red Lake has been, um, you know, any anybody who who grows up in Minnesota, uh, Red Lake is is kind of legendary in its in its own right, and it's had its ups and downs. And you know, if you're somebody who really pays attention to conservation, uh, the way that Nicole and I both passionately really do, um, you know that you know it's it's had yeah. I mean, it's it, it's had plenty of publicity around you know its conservation. Um, you know, factors and seeing how well that that fishery has rebounded uh, is really inspiring. And uh, yeah, you mentioned the crappies. We, we did that trip, you know, we did that trip just, Hey, it's just going to be a girl's trip. We're just going to go out here and kind of DIY. And we were in no way, shape or form anticipating catching a single crappie. Nicole, as she mentioned in that video, I mean, she's been going to Red Lake for years and years with her family, multiple times a year, and she's never caught those crappies. However, anybody who fishes it uh, has heard the stories about what it used to be like and that it used to be, I mean, there's, there's even a, there's a resort up there that has a photo, an aerial photo of the lake and the crappie schools are so big that you can see them from the air. Oh, wow. And, and you know, that, that's just like the legend that it used to be. And then after the population collapsed, um, you know, there's just some over harvesting of those, those crappies. Um, it's just insanely cool that not only did we figure out that that population is rebounding, but that we got it on film. So we were just over the moon excited to, uh, to get into those fish. And of course we, we got a lot of flack for releasing them. <laughs> So, uh, that's crazy. Um, which is, you know, it, but it's like, you know, that that's prime breeding stock right there. That those are the fish that we want to go back and we want to continue to have that population rebound. And um, you know, we were just we just couldn't believe that 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 was, you know, a part of that uh <laughs> a part of that trip that we got into those surprise giant crappies. Well, it's it's just, you know, um crappie fishers are like that uh they're called pan fish for a reason although you're gonna have yeah. to have, graduate up to a big old skillet for some of those you're pulling through but <laughs> this is the thing i love about your ethic uh release the big ones nothing wrong with keeping some eaters um sure. you you keep your share of walleyes and 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 then you know you keep the crappies if they're if they're uh the, the size the uh what i call the slot size the size that there's there's most of you know and and, and yeah leave those genetics in the lake i i, I really admire that and it's always great to know that um, there's other anglers out there that say, Hey, you know, and, and it's fine. I understand everybody just giving you kind of trouble. Cause they're like, I ought to release that into Crisco Lake. That's yeah. <laughs> That's what oh, we said gosh. Right the comments were endless So we, we, we had a good laugh about it though. I mean, uh, you know, people are always going to say, Oh yeah, th those were, those are dinner plate for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay. So now I, this is too much for me. The Lake Winnipeg trip, the greenbacks. Um, I, I, I want to talk about 
some things in terms of gender and binaries and so forth um, in fishing. But um, I tell you, when I got onto this, following this feed on your Instagram, the little film of Nicole driving the snow bear and hollering. And <laughs> I'm just like, you guys are just like a couple crazy dudes out there. I mean, <laughs> I, I don't want to say men are like women, women like men. I don't want to get in trouble. I, I'm, I'm old. That's the way we used to think about it. But, you know, frankly, you're just a couple of fun loving fishers, you know, rocking like any two fishers would. It was so awesome to have her just like, whoa, 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 this big old thing. <laughs> woo you know, she's just going along. That was fantastic. Hey, we're just trying to cheat. You know, you, you hear about boys fishing trips, you know, for years and years. And we're just trying to show the girls that, hey, you know, we you can we, you can get out there and have a girls fishing trip just like the boys. You know, we that's that's the image what we're trying to champion. And, and uh, this trip, uh, like many of our other trips, uh, go to show that you can you can certainly have that level of fun with your gal pals or with your guy pals or a significant other, whomever you decide. But yeah, that's definitely the, the approach that we took to this trip. Well, it's fantastic. I love the <laughs> exercising to get ready for walleye. And then we, <laughs> we see the things you're pulling through the ice. No wonder you had to exercise. Holy cow. <laughs> yeah. You a little bit of a workout to, uh, to get fish that size up the hole. <laughs> Uh, no, I mean, it's crazy. And, and this is another thing, folks. Anna does not weigh a lot of fish. In fact, I can't think of an episode where she does not that I would, I fault people for doing it. But we all know in conservation wise, uh, those big fish, you got, you know, you, you don't want their guts shifting around. You don't want stuff happening to them. Uh, they are one of the best uh, pick and release uh, teams I've ever seen. But that one, what a tank. What was your estimated size on that one, Greeny? Oh gosh, my well the, that if you're referring to the the big one out of the the snow bear, that yeah. was the first fish of the trip. Whoa. <laughs> so yeah, we started off with a bang to say the very least, and uh, that one measured that one measured to be 29 inches, which is just you know a hair, just a one inch shy of you know the the ultimate trophy of breaking 30 inches in the walleye world. Um, but in Manitoba, a master angler walleye is considered anything over 28 inches. So we were super pleased, uh, with that, with that fish. I mean, I was just, I, I was practically in tears. I was just like, oh my gosh, this is just insane that that was the first fish we caught. Um, but yeah, I mean, fish handling is everything to us as you, as you mentioned, and we, we really credit, uh, you know, our, our, our friends up in Manitoba for really championing that it, uh, it goes to show in the quality of their fisheries, just how effective creating a community consciousness around how you handle fish properly and just how sustainable your populations are, how much lessened your mortality rates are of those fish when they are handled properly. And, and Nicole and I tried to do everything we can to make sure that we're showing that to anybody who's watching our videos, you know, we don't, we do not keep those fish out of the water more than 30 seconds. Uh, if, you know, if we need to take another measure or if we need to, you know, snap a quick picture, we are putting that fish right back in the water, letting, letting it breathe, getting those gills just totally submerged and uh, sending them back as, as quickly as possible. And that's, you know, that's what it's all about for us. You know, we, we catch these trophies and we get to let them live another day to be caught again. So um, it's been really, really cool to to see how Manitoba has embraced that and how uh, a lot of people in the United States are really starting to jump on board with that. Oh, it, it is fantastic. But I, I, we talk about a lot about length because, uh, you know, a lot of people are, are not weighing as much. Um, but you got to, you know, that girth on that thing. I mean, at least, what, 12 pounds? Yeah, I would say I, I, if I had to guess, it was probably I, yeah, <laughs> the girth on them was, was was probably the most impressive. I mean, yeah, you, oh, you holy cow! I mean, you, we could you know we were using eight inch holes, which is almost comical in in some sense because it's like oh my gosh, they like barely. <laughs> yeah, it's like pulling a key up through one of those things. I mean, you know, it's crazy. Yeah, so I you know some of them I would say probably the the thirty inch uh, of the trip that Nicole caught on the last day that we were there, oh. I would say. Um, yeah, somewhere between 12 and 13 pounds. I mean, these fish are just, just fat and happy. <laughs> so first, first and last, huh? Intro exit. Uh, what could be more perfect? A trophy, trophy bookends. Yes. Uh, yes. With, 
with plenty of other 28s and 27s and 26s in between. We just, we, we felt beyond spoiled um, fishing. Oh, that I, saw, I saw that. I saw that chrome colored uh, vibrate bait that you were using that day. <laughs> you, you know, the, that's, that'll be, that'll be a, a story for me. That's kind of a, a legend in itself just for me personally, because I'm, I'm the queen of if I get a fish to look at a bait two times and they don't take it, I'm switching baits. Right, and I honest, I, I I swear my life on it that I did not change my lure one time in four days. Right on. <laughs> so nice when you pick the right one, right off, yeah. Yeah, I was like, well, it worked the first round, and it's it's still working, so I'm sticking to it. So you're checking your knot. You're going, oh, I don't want to lose this, you know. Yeah, yeah. And have you gone out and bought like twenty of them now, just in case. Yeah, I'm gonna have to retire that one. That one, uh, <laughs> that one's gonna go on the wall. Just uh, right. so, you know, a little, a little uh, memorabilia. But uh, I'm definitely gonna go out and yeah, probably buy about twenty more. <laughs> well, I, I, I would, I would. I, I don't know if I could feel safe if I didn't have a bait that productive uh, with backup. <laughs> Okay, so now let's go on. Um, we might get back to Lake Winnipeg here in a minute. I just, you know, I encourage everybody to check the videos out. I know the first, well, part one just dropped on Nicole's channel. Um, and I know you're starting to develop yours. So if I say the wrong channel, let me know. No, that's right. Um, but uh, right now. All right, that was part one of our interview with Anna Lesishin of Anna on Ice. How exciting. I tell you, it was really a great experience for me. And don't worry, we've got two or three more segments coming. Um, I want to make a correction real quick. I think I called her TV show Outward Bound. She is on Outdoor Bound. And you can catch Outdoor Bound TV on ABC uh, Sports Stream, uh, Canada Hunting, I think. Um, I'm sorry if I don't get all these correct. Um, it's also available on some stations in Kamchatka and, and the rest of uh uh, far eastern Siberia, believe it or not. But um, anyway, more simply, you can just catch Outdoor Bound on YouTube. Um, also, the information for the lodges and the links and all the stuff for the videos and everything else will be down below in the show notes. Um, that uh, I got a picture of the snow bear. Uh, you can get up to that uh, adventure company there on Lake Winnipeg and you can get yourself a ride around that snow bear because we all know that ice fishing ends too soon for a lot of people. And, uh, hey, there's points north you can go to keep the party going. Okay, um, I'll download a pic of that snow bear. Um, the lure she used was a chrome-colored Rapallo Vibro Wrap or some such. Anyway, that's the lure that caught all the huge walleye. Uh, there's a picture of her with a big green back down below. Check it out. This has been Crappie Hippie saying tight lines and valentines. Peace out. And we'll have uh, part two of that interview on next week's podcast. So we look forward to that. Thank you, Anna, for coming on the show. Thanks, Crappie Hippie, for doing all you do for the fish nerds. And you really do, uh, people who don't know this, uh, you really are a big part of the show. And you really do so much for us. Keep us motivated. Keep us going. And speaking of keeping us motivated, keep us going, uh, nothing keeps us going is money. We need money for the show. If you've got a business and you want to advertise with the Fish Nerds, just email me, clay at fishnerds.com, and I'll send you out a rate sheet. And we also are open to creative partnership ideas as well. We are super lucky, though, because we do have a couple of uh, sponsors, and our, our, our latest sponsor is Olukai, which is a handcrafted Hawaii-inspired footwear finding, uh, footwear finding, <laughs> footwear company, finding inspiration in Hawaiian culture and craftsmanship. Fishing is at the heart of the Hawaiian culture today, just as it has been for centuries. Generations of fishermen and women expertly cast from rocky shorelines and sandy beaches. They spear, throw, net, fly fish, and navigate their boats beyond the reef and into the deep blue in search of the next big catch. No matter how they do it, there is an attention to detail and respect for the ocean that guides their passion at Ulukai. They believe in the same attention to detail when crafting the highest quality shoes and sandals built for every type of marine environment. Alukai's water-friendly Nohe Amako slip-on shoe features razor sip, uh, sipping with non-marking rubber for extra grip on the deck dock or the rocks, and it's designed for easy on-off barefoot wear. I have a pair of these I'll be wearing in my boat this summer. And when it comes to sandals that perform, Alukai's new Ulela provides the comfort and durability of a sneaker for those long days in the boat or on the shore. Um, I have a couple of pairs of these shoes in a box, and my wife and I are trying to find time together 
together to do an official unboxing, but they look great. We can't wait to test them out, and we really do appreciate the support that Lukai has given us. And we highly recommend, if you like the Fish Nerds, support those who support us. So go to O. L U K A I dot com slash fish nerds and show them that advertising with the fish nerds matters and that you support those who support us. Just visit the click visit the website, scroll down, click the link, and you're in. And we'll have links up at fishnerds.com, of course, to help you get it. We also are supported by uh, su- by our Patreon supporters. Um, we're going to be updating that page as soon as I get some time next week uh, to add some more perks and benefits to it. But one of the perks is if you give us twenty five bucks. We will mention your business on the show. And Josh Lopes at lopestax.com did just that. Lopes has been giving money to the show for years. Uh, and uh, Josh Lopes is a friend of mine. And you could, if you need help with your taxes, go to lopestax.com and, uh, and support. Again, support those who support the fish nerds. Uh, and if you can afford it, give us a buck or two. That helps us a big deal. What this big deal? It's fun. All right, and so let's get on with the news. News, news, fish in the news. Everybody loves their fish in the news. Meredith is host, Meredith New Hampshire, is host to one of our biggest winter events every year, the Great Rotary Ice Fishing Derby. Is presented by the Meredith Rotary Club, and the event brings ice fishermen from across the country to Meredith for a weekend of fun fishing and seeing what your tolerance for cold and frostbite is. In the end, the payoff is being one of the lucky few who get to experience the pride of having their catch hung up on the wall of fame and winning an amazing grand prize. It's a family-friendly event with an almost carnival-like atmosphere on the ice in Meredith Bay as it transforms into a sea of vendors and bob houses. And we are so happy because we have uh, Mike Steffen on the line here. And Mike Steffen was this year's winner of the Great Rotary Ice Fishing Derby in New Hampshire. And he won $15,000 for a block a block <laughs> for a black crappie. And so we're super happy to bring you Mike Steffen. Uh, and I think you're going to like him. And Mike Steffen's been a friend of the show for a long, long time. And for me personally. So you're going to enjoy this interview for our Fish in the News. All right. So as you heard, we have Mike Steffen here. And Mike Steffen is the grand prize winner of the great Rotary Ice Fishing Derby. Also a longtime friend of the Fish Nerds podcast and me personally. Good morning, Mike. Hey, good morning. We got to play. That's so good to see you. I haven't seen you in a couple, gosh, a couple of seasons since we fished together. Yeah, not and, really. Yeah, it's yeah. Been, be, we did some good fishing last time. We haven't done anything since. I know, and we'll make up. I think next year I'm going to derby fish with you. So you won the Great Rotary Ice Fishing Derby uh, by catching a black black crappie. Mm-hmm. So, I, so there's a lot of questions. First of all, um, we have some fish nerds questions, and the biggest one is: Could we have the GPS coordinates of the spot you caught that fish at? Anybody who personally knows me already knows where I was. So. Yeah. If you find me in person, maybe I'll be friendly. <laughs> it's only the spot. <laughs> the only yeah. spot. Well, actually, a lot of black crappies, um, I mean, that's not a crazy, impossible fish to catch. But it was No, no. One. That's why it's an easy – it's a good one to target for that derby. Yeah. That's why I do it every year. Go to that same spot because I know if you put in a good weekend of work there that you can get a fish that's 14 inches plus generally every time. Yeah, and you did it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you, did it. <laughs> and you caught that fish on Saturday. It's a two-day derby. You caught that one on Saturday? Yeah, Saturday around like 10.30-ish, I pulled it out of the water. Now, how long were you able to sit on that fish before bringing it down to the headquarters and get it weighed in? So I kept on watching it since they post up the uh, the weights. Like, you know, every, well, they were pretty slow this weekend. They generally post the weights every hour. And I sat there till around uh, 3.30-ish, and then I started to walk off the ice. And the uh, they stopped measuring at 5 for that day. And I was debating whether or not to go on that Saturday, because if you hold on to a fish, you could also put it on the board on Sunday. But they lose weight. Uh, a little bit, potentially, yeah. But if you're you know, between, you know, when they dry out a little bit. All right, so you got on the board on Saturday. Did you win the prize for Saturday? Yeah, so Saturday was a solid, uh, I think I was like 0. 0.4 uh, larger than the next fish. And yeah, so that was 500 bucks just for that day. That's a good day of work, any day. <laughs> yeah, again. And then, and then Sunday, you went fishing again. Yep, Sunday, same thing. Same exact spot. Yeah, Same hole, get, just get any, regional thing. Get any more big crappies? I got some that were like right below 13 inches, but nothing that was 
really board worthy. And they only, the minimum is 13 inches there too. But the day before on Saturday, I had fish that were good sized crappie that I didn't think would actually place on the board based on previous years. But two of them probably would have won money on Sunday if I didn't fill him. Oh, it's too bad you ate them. <laughs> yeah. So like, was like, eat, I ate like money. <laughs> yeah. I ate like $150, I figured. Ah, a fish. So. <laughs> it, worked, it worked out for you in the end. Were you fishing Lake yeah. Winterstocky the whole time? Was that your. Yeah, that was the one for that. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, also nearby the Derby, which is nice. Yeah. So before we get into the winnings and your your Disney trip coming up and all the stuff you're going to do with your big money, let's talk a little bit of, of crappie fishing technique. Now I fish with you and I mm-hmm. see you pull fish out of holes where nobody else can touch a fish. Like you've got a little bit of a, a touch for this kind of fishing. So what is your setup for crappies for ice fishing? So I'm, I always have my Vexilar unit for, you know, so a flasher unit and then light line, a uh, small jigging rod with like three pound test or so. And the biggest key for really getting crappie to bite, well, you even got to find them. So knowing good spots, but then for the most part, don't do big movements, just kind of hold it in front of them, little tiny twitches. And then you just kind of wait for them to bite. And a lot of times you don't even see them bite. So you have to watch the uh, Vexilar very closely. And when they kind of line up, you pull to see if anything's on there, and then yeah. you set the hook. Right, because what they do is they'll suck the bait in their mouth and spit it out, right? Yeah, or just hold on to it, I'm pretty yeah. sure, and just be like, you know, doing nothing with it. Yeah, my 12-year-old daughter, when she's watching the sonar, when the lines match up, she just sets hooks automatically. Oh, yeah, that's and, the way to do it, really. And she outfishes me probably four to one every time. Yeah, just, just slow It's the yeah. best way. Yeah, barely moves at all. Yeah, so, just little tiny twitches, like more less than like an inch. Yeah, and so what, what jig were you using? Uh, it's like a, I forget what it was. It's like a custom jig, not like a custom, like I ordered custom, but like it's a custom jig and something. You can get them at Bass Pro Shop, basically any place that has ice fishing gear. It's like, tungsten. like a little teardrop, that's it? Yeah, basically, yeah. yeah. So it doesn't, their brand doesn't matter that much. unless No, not really. I think you yeah. see the same exact ones for other companies. Yeah, so <laughs> I, mean, I like to be a brand person if I don't have to be. So, no. all right. So, you, and you caught the fish. And and so tell me, I want I, I, one of my greatest joys is this picture I saw of you uh, yeah. holding up your ticket and the the look of the entire rest of the audience staring at you on that. So yeah, um it's my favorite too. When <laughs> tell me about what happened when you when they announced you won the fifteen thousand dollars. So I mean I really don't remember entirely. I was kind of focused on myself, so I wasn't really right. looking around. Right. But you know, just being like, Oh my god, I can't believe it. It seems crazy. And then a bunch of people congratulate me and stuff. So they they look they're scowling at me in the picture, but then they turn friendly right after that. Yeah, well, they, it was I, I watched a live stream of you winning, mm-hmm. and I heard you yell out like with joy, and yeah. I and I heard a bunch Everyone of people go, who? Yeah, like, oh. you came out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, I was all by myself that day too. Oh, <laughs> Literally, just I told my girlfriend like, maybe if you want to come, it'd be cool. If I win anything, it'd be fun. But at the same time, it's an hour and a half away, yeah. and there's more likely not I'm going to lose. So don't bother, really. It's probably not worth it. Right. And so then you were like, I oh, now I, yeah. now I got $15,000. I got a bunch of hairy men I can hug, and that's all I got. Yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> so, you guys patting me on the head and stuff. Yeah. So let me just try this picture really quick. So the picture that we were talking about a minute ago, it's Mike Steffen holding up his ticket and like 30 angry-looking, hairy, big men. <laughs> like glaring at you and it's yeah, the, and I'm and not it, a big guy either so no but it's great <laughs> it's such a beautiful like it tells such a big story and I just love it I mean we will say I want to have me on to congratulate you I mean yeah, crappie fishing is not that hard um mm-hmm. but you know, congratulations I love that a crappie beat out a lake trout mm-hmm. um, I would actually love to see lake trout being taken off of the um, derby list of fish yeah right? I agree some people are pretty mad that a crappie won it and not like the big lake trout yeah, I, I just, the idea, I mean, I, I've always been kind of like wishy-washy on derbies, and mm-hmm. this derby particularly, the fact that they take the biggest lake trout they can and nail them to a board yeah. um, always really kind of uh, hurts my environmental brain, you know. The, yeah, any of the big fish, I think. Yeah. I mean, really, anything like the, that I would put on the board for this weekend, I'd have thrown back immediately, but yeah. this weekend is worth, you know. Well, <laughs> for the right amount of money, we'll all give up our ethics. I mean, honestly, exactly. if I if I was fishing the Derby and I caught a forty inch Laker and I knew that was worth fifteen thousand dollars, I'd be like, "Well, he lived a good life," you know. Mm-hmm. But when I lose, I'm like, "They shouldn't be doing that." Yeah. <laughs> so we're all kind of have that number that works for mm-hmm. us. Exactly. All right. So so you you fish a lot. Your ice fishing is your primary um, sport. Is that your favorite kind? Uh, I don't know if I would say that or not. Yeah. I thought about that before. Maybe. It's definitely something I look forward to. 
Yeah, it's exciting. But I like all fishing, really. So yeah, and you live in Maine now. Where where in Maine are you? I'm in Wells, Maine, so right on the coast. You can yeah. see the beach pretty much from our upstairs window. That's not bad. So yeah, you won. Not. So you won fifteen thousand dollars. The state kept a big piece of that. Yeah, or no, the federal government took a big piece of that. I they, feel like the state of Maine may try to come after it next year. As income, <laughs> yeah. So in yeah. the end, but you still got a big pile of money. You got big. Oh yeah, still over a lot of thousand. So yeah, you got big plans for it. Uh, so my initial thought was I want a snowmobile, but uh-huh. that's probably the better way to spend it would be to put it for a down payment on a house sooner than later than it would have been. <laughs> yeah, but you, know, you could drop a thousand on a snowmobile and be pretty. Yeah, I know. I'm still going to keep looking for sure. And yeah. there's some other things I got that I was thought about throughout the year that I was going to buy. And maybe I'll buy like the next better one. So. Yeah, you could upgrade a little bit. Yeah, my little my little snow. You've you've seen my snowmobile. It's a tiny machine. Yeah. I think I paid twelve hundred dollars for that with the trailer. Oh, but the, yeah, trailer would be, I need a trailer. You need both. You can't, <laughs> it doesn't do you any good. You can't get from Wells, Maine to Winnipesaukee on you know, a snowmobile. Yeah, <laughs> I'll probably look more in like the summer when people just don't want to deal with it. Or maybe at the end of the season when they're yeah. like, eh, I don't want to. Have well, that's in a way, so. that's really cool. Well, congratulations. I'm not going to keep yeah. you too long. Well, I just mostly wanted to congratulate you. I didn't. Yeah, I don't care about the interview that much. I'm just happy. That, <laughs> I'm, I was so happy to see you of anybody in the state winning mm-hmm. that thing when you won. I was. I couldn't be happier for anybody. <laughs> I mean, so a lot of people said they were. A couple of people said they were just glad. It, mostly, it was somebody they knew, and it wasn't just some drunk asshole. Right. Yeah. It's too many. Dr- <laughs> and a fair amount of drunk assholes win the derby. Oh, yeah. You know? oh, and there, sure. there's some very good fishers out there. But uh, you did it. Congratulations. Mm-hmm. Thanks. And, and are you up to anything good fishy lately in the uh, private world in your business or anything? Uh no, not really. No? Good. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna end this end this conversation. And thank all you right. so much. Don't don't hang yeah. up though. Stay with me. Yeah. All right, and we've been running a calling contest. Our phone number here at the Fish Nerds Podcast is 607-378-FISH. And we've had a question of the month. It takes about two months, though, to get enough uh, entries to make it a contest. And our contest last month was uh, to tell us your biggest fishy disaster or fail. So uh, we've got a whole bunch of phone calls. We're going to play this for you in just a minute. Uh, and then we'll, at the end, we'll announce the winner. The winner w- wins a Fish Nerds prize package that includes Fish Nerds decals, a Fish Nerds beanie, some lures, and some other crap I've got laying around my office. So if you want to win some crap, you have to enter these contests. <laughs> um, our contest for next month is tell us your biggest fishy luck stories, something lucky that happened to you because of fishing. And we're going to try and wrap it up for our St. Patrick's Day show. So get those calls in, 607-378-FISH. Everyone who enters will get a Fish Nerds uh, decal if at the end of your message you take a pause and leave us your address. But you need to talk slowly and clearly because if I can't write it down, I can't mail it to you. Um, I have also, last month, several return to senders because I got addresses wrong. So take your time and tell me your address in order that they go on the envelope. Don't confuse me because I'm old and I can't get it right. So we're going to jump right into our fishy disasters and with our first call coming in right here. And again, 607-378-FISH to get involved with any of our contests. Or if you just want to leave us a, you know, a funny story, anecdote, or... You just want to talk to me. <laughs> I get lonely sometimes. So let's jump in to the biggest fishy disasters with our first call right now. Hey, Clay. This is uh, Daryl Descaray. Hey, Daryl. Uh, weird pause. Okay, here's where we'll go. Um, first of all, I would like to enter the contest. You're entered. Uh, this, I guess, is contest for uh, January. Uh, strange, weird things that has happened to me. Um, weird, strange, or disaster, I guess you could call it. Uh, one time out ice fishing several years back in uh, southern Wisconsin, we were sitting over, I don't know, 15, 20 foot of water, crystal clear water, gin clear water. We're looking down the hole, and I heard something that sounded like a gravel truck off in the distance. And as it got closer and closer and closer, I realized it wasn't a gravel truck. It was actually the ice sheet that we were sitting on no. was shifting because uh, there was a giant crack about a half a mile from us, and the entire shelf I was sitting on uh, moved us about uh, 30 feet. 
Um, it was a huge shudder, um, and then it got eerily quiet afterwards. That when we so attempted to uh, leave the uh, ice later that day, we had seen uh, where we had come across. It was a giant fissure, and we were unable to get off the ice there. We had to actually access the uh, 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 private property to get back to our vehicles. That was the uh, weirdest and strangest thing I've ever seen uh, ice fishing. That's really spooky. And when you said giant fisher, I was en- envisioning the animal like a giant fisher cat. Um, but it, that's a really scary thing. And ice fishing in New Hampshire, we don't see as much ice as you get out in Wisconsin where you have miles and miles of it. So that doesn't happen as often. But I mean, I've seen some of those videos on the YouTubes and it is frightening. Glad you're safe. Thanks for calling the show and being part of this fishing contest. Uh, boy, that ice is such a funny, funny thing this year, too. Come and interrupt. Here's our next call for the Fishy Disasters. Hello, Clay and the Fish Nerds. My name is Piper. I'm from Wyoming. Hey, Piper. And I'm calling to put in my entry for the greatest fishing disaster. Um, I think the greatest disaster I've had while fishing was about when I was 10 years old, I would say. Uh, My dad and I were out fishing with my grandpa, and he was helping me bring a fish up to the bank, but as soon as he put down his rod to come over to help me, uh, he saw his rod shoot into the water. Something had picked up his rod, some sort of fish, and just took off with his rod. He had seconds to grab it, but lost it. So, kind of ruined the day of fishing. But that's my greatest fishing disaster. Thanks for listening. Well, you're welcome for me listening to your disaster. The uh, That reminds me, when I was a kid, I was fishing out in Washington State, and similar, my mom was, my stepmom was fishing, and put her rod down for two seconds to help my little sister with a worm or something silly, and we watched her rod take off into the water. Incidentally, no fish were caught that weekend. The only opportunity for a fish was the one that stole our fishing rod, and that uh, was just so sad, and, and she was so angry about it that she couldn't focus on fishing the rest of the day. <laughs> so it's it's normal. It happens. Here's next call. Hey, Clay, calling the fishing disaster. A couple of years ago, friends of mine and I saw this guide on television putting his clients on all kinds of big striped bass and stuff. So we thought, well, we'll give him a try. So we set up a charter to go out with him. And uh, the week before the uh, charter, on a Saturday morning, I, I had a, a very bad family emergency Um and so I had to cancel. I called the guide and said, "No, these my buddies are coming, but I'm not coming." And good luck and all that. And uh, hung up and you know tried to sleep. But you know it was a Saturday morning. We hadn't slept at all because we were waiting for the phone to ring for a, uh, some terrible news. You know if this person got off life support or not. We didn't know. So at uh, 5:30 in the morning at the appointed hour. When the charter was supposed to begin, my phone rings, waking all the family up. Um, and it's the guy who says, oh, your buddies are texting me, and uh, uh, I don't know what to tell them, but I can't do the trip. And uh, my, phone, my phone is a problem. That's the, uh, the alarm didn't go off. It's a brand-new iPhone, and oh, it's no. all its fault. And uh, I uh, can't do the trip because I overslept in uh, – uh, see you later. And then he hung up. <laughs> I was like, what? Oh my God. I told you not to call me because of the family emergency. You're terrible. Uh, and, you know, we knew that this guy was 10 minutes from the dock. So it's 5 30 in the morning. He's awake calling me, waking me up out of my family emergency. And, uh, and he refuses to go to the dock. And, uh, so my buddies have to, uh, go from marina to marina looking for a guide to take them out for the day because they'd driven there the night before, got a hotel, paid for a nice dinner, all that junk, and uh, now there's no fishing. So they eventually found a guide who had no clients, and they went out and had a iffy day on an unsafe boat because, you know, if it's the middle of summer and you're a sniper guide and you have nobody on a Saturday morning, you're not too good. Uh, so, <laughs> needless to say, that guy was a disaster. We've never hired him again. 
uh, wasn't my fault of a disaster, but I hopefully it uh, counts for your contest. And thanks. It it counts. And as a guide, I my biggest fear is forgetting about a client, like having a client show up to go on the ice fishing trip or something, and me not being there. I I can't sleep well before a trip. I've got a trip coming out in about an hour this morning, and I'm nervous about getting this podcast mixed on time and getting that out. So man, the fact that he didn't have any anxiety, didn't care. Definitely. I'm glad you redacted his name. Oh, man, that's crazy. Next call. Hi, my name is Joseph Schrader. I was calling to get that free decal if I told you on my worst fishing story. my pro- It would probably be when I was stepping onto our boat, and the boat kind of pushed off from the dock, and I ended up having to go swimming after the boat. I've done that. So that was interesting. Uh, now, when that happened to me, I... Thought I checked my pockets and I jumped in the water and lost my iPhone. So always check it twice. That's my my advice there. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about your contest about the uh, catastrophe fishing, your biggest disaster. Yeah, I was taking my two grandsons, eight, seven, and nine, fishing on the Fox River in Wisconsin on a dock, and they were catching little fish. And I'm sitting on my cooler that I carry all my fish equipment in. I sat down, the cooler moved, the back end went off the dock, and I went backwards off into the river. <laughs> In the meantime, my glasses were gone, and my two hearing aids were gone. So that was a $3,000 swim. Good times. So that's my disaster. That's that's quite an expensive uh, a swim. I hope you learned your lesson. Odds are you did not, because none of us ever do. We always make those kind of disasters over and over. Man, I'm sorry. Three grand. Ouch. I don't even I, I I don't know how I leave brain like my brain space would recover from that one. I, that's a lot of money. I, I couldn't do that. Next caller. Hi, Clay and Fish Nerds Nation. I uh, my name is Matt Philippi. I'm calling from the Shenandoah Valley in Virginia. Hi, Matt. And I'm calling with my worst fishing disaster. Uh, this story took place probably about 16 years ago or so, and I was on a scout trip in a camp in Canada. Uh, it, was an, it was an American troop, but we went up to visit. And it was this uh, lake-based camp, absolutely gorgeous, great place to spend a week uh, in the middle of nowhere. And I spent a lot of time fishing there because we were on a lake and I uh, love fishing and always have. And um, it was, you know, we had, there was water all around us. We didn't have too much to do. So one of the days, I, I mean, this was in July, mind you. One of these days, we were out on the lake in a little canoe, and we were, uh, me and a buddy, we were just, you know, spending our time just casting out and drifting along and catching walleye and smallmouth. And then all of a sudden, the skies got dark, the wind picked up, and a storm blew in. And we experienced high winds, rain, sleet, and snow on the 4th of July. The winds became... So high, made the water so choppy, we ended up t- tipping the canoe and lost all of our fishing gear on that trip. And, I mean, this was like Wednesday of the week, so the rest of the week we didn't get to do any fishing, and we lost all of our gear, which for a couple of teenagers uh, without much money, it certainly certainly took a hit. But um, that that was probably my worst fishing disaster. I've been fortunate. Um, not, I, if I had wood right now, I would knock on it. That I haven't had too many as an adult, just lots and lots of lost lures. Um, but thanks again for all you do, Clay. If you haven't had many disasters as an adult, hold on to your seats. It's going to happen. <laughs> They're unavoidable. Uh, but man, I, I've been in that situation where I've been out fishing on a beautiful day and had the weather turn, and there's nothing you can do. It's not your fault. It's an act of nature or God or whatever you want to do, but... And I can imagine how scary that would have been. But I think it's happened to everybody at one point. I'm seeing a theme here that most people's disasters are expensive. Uh, and I think that's a fair a fair thing. So thanks for calling in with that. Let's get on with our next caller. Got done having some great crappie fishing action at the heated dock down at Hillsdale. That's Me and my good crappie. friend and fellow fish nerd, Todd Birdie Birdsell. And I happened to ask him in the conversation on the way back to the house, what's your biggest fishing fail? Let's hear it, Todd. My biggest fishing fail is buying a boat and then buying a net to fit the boat instead of buying a net to fit the fish. 
you wish so we're taking my brother-in-law out as they come back from montana to visit and we're out fishing chasing walleyes crappies whatever's going to bite and uh, so he hooks into a walleye it of course going to be his biggest walleye of his life and i pull out my nice little fancy net that is supposed to be for you know the crappies and, and it kind of fits the boat you know, it's not real big. It extends out, not a great big wide mouth on or anything. And I'm getting it out to net this fish, figuring, oh, it's going to be, you know, 10, 12 inch crappie. No, it ends up being, you know, about a four pound walleye. So he's fighting it and all that good stuff. I get the net out. I go to dip it down in there. And of course, the fish is three times the size of the net. We can't get it in and it's flopping around. And I'm trying to flop the net underneath of it and it just didn't work out very good. And to end the story is the fish gets away the net knocks the lure out of the mouth all that fun stuff so my fishing fail is buying too small of a net for it to fit the boat and not for the fish that we're chasing after okay and so you managed to uh, heal the family uh rift somehow i take it buying a bigger net <laughs> <laughs> maybe uh buy a smaller boat or fish for smaller fish. I don't know. I I don't. <laughs> I I would love that problem. I'd be so happy to get a fish that I couldn't fit in my net. I don't. Maybe I don't fish right. I don't know. I never it never happens to me. But congratulations on a big fish. I guess. <laughs> Let's get on with this next call here for our biggest fishy disasters. Hey, fish nerds. Uh -oh. This is Rich Collins. Hi, Rich, Rich Collins. Collins, in other words. Uh, my most fishy disaster was today because I made the stupid, stupid mistake of going out to Silver Lake. Once mm. again, suck at Silver Lake, <laughs> stood there for six hours in the cold, didn't see a fish, didn't see a buzz on the screen, didn't see a thing. The only fish I saw was in Vinny's bucket, and I keep doing it to myself, and it's a disaster. Um, that's it. This is Ruth Collins, and I live on a 322 Bye. <laughs> All right, for those who don't know, that's Rich Collins. He's our fly fishing correspondent, uh, and he, he likes to fish with us on Silver Lake here in New Hampshire, where the worst lake in the state. Uh, lake I happen to guide on. We run a hashtag on Instagram called Suck It Silver Lake. It is a real challenging lake to fish. We have been catching a lot of lake trout lately. If you want to fish with us, go to fishers.com to book your trip today, and you too can get skunked on Silver Lake. It's amazing that people uh, are having fun with that. <laughs> hey, fishers. This is Alex from San Marcos. Hi, I'm Alex. Calling for the fishy contest. Um, my submission is when I was on the dock at Discovery Lake San Marcos. Um, I was with my dog. He was on the right of me. I was just fishing. There's many bluegill and bass in the lake, and he must have saw either a bluegill or a bass and jumped into the lake. He, a, um, he has two different mix of German Shepherd and Another mix that I can't remember right now, but call those mutts. he jumped into the lake, tried to get that, and I was I was the only one there. I was all alone because the lake is about two minutes away. I always walk there with my dog, and I go fishing sometimes. So, but my dog, he jumped in. I had to jump in, all clothes on, shoes and everything. Got him out of the water, and that dock is pretty high there, so it was pretty hard to get back up. And yeah, it, we, after that, went, I got him out. I got back up. My fishing pole was still in the water, had to reel that in. And after that, we went straight home, got dried off. And yeah, again, my name is Alex Bettencourt, and I'm calling for the Fishy Contest. Thank you, Alex Bettencourt. Glad you called in. Glad you're taking care of your dog. I would have let my dog just be wet. I would have said, sorry, buddy. <laughs> you're out of luck. <laughs> Glad you listened to the show. Hope you didn't listen to last week's show. Give us one, Anna. Can you give us a fish failure disaster that uh, sticks in your mind or you'd like to talk about? Oh, I got a great one. This actually just happened a couple weekends ago. Um, <laughs> so I, uh, I set some tip-ups. And I, don't like tip -ups. I had two flags go off like Boom, boom, like you know, that. and they're probably, I don't know, maybe five yards apart. And I go to the first one and I start to 
I, you know, I start to hand line it. And there's, so there's definitely a fish on it's fighting me back, but I get it to a certain spot and it's like, it won't move. Like it's stuck on something. I'm not, it's, I'm, I'm just racking my brain. It's not stuck in the ice. So I'm, I'm, I'm convinced it's, you know, stuck on a log or something like the fish has wrapped it around something. So I go to the, I'm like, well, maybe, you know, then I, I'm pulling it and I can see the other chip up moving. I'm like, oh my gosh, this fish has these lines wrapped. So I go over to the other one and I, <laughs> I go to the other one. I pull that line and the same thing. I can tell it's stuck on something, but I, I somehow maneuver it where I get that line and the fish and the other line up the hole. And for whatever reason, and, you know, it's a nice walleye. It's probably like a, you know, 22 inch walleye. And for whatever reason, I'm like, oh, I clipped the other line. And I was like, well, this is a good eater for whatever fish or whatever. So I leave it on the ice and I go back to the other one and I pull, I, to go cut the line and I pull the whole dang fish and the other line back. So I was basically just playing back and forth with this line and this poor fish, which I ended up making into a delicious meal. But uh, I was just like baffled by my own, you know, stupidity of like, oh, great. I'm just I'm just pulling the fish out of one hole and then pulling it back in. And it was just a disaster. <laughs> All right. I love it. I love it. Thank you very much. That is. Yes, I, I would probably not get away as cleanly as you did. I, I've i been the Charlie Brown in the in the kite string. Uh, in a situation like that is what I have pictured. And that was the crappy hippie, of course, with Anna on ice doing her biggest fishy disaster. I've had similar things happen to me. I think it happens to everybody once in a while. Let's get on with some more calls from listeners. Hi, Clay and Fish Nerds. I am not sure if I already entered for the contest or not, you but did. I'll enter again if I did. Yeah, this is a better one. Uh, I'm Dave with Wisconsin Outlook and... My worst fishing catastrophe was my second time ever putting a boat in the water, pulling it out. When pulling it out, I had, it was me and my nephew in my car, and we backed the trailer into the water, and my father loaded the boat up onto there, and then I was afraid of sliding backwards so i hit the gas kind of hard and i started to go backwards and i assumed i was sliding backwards so i get hit the gas even harder but it turns out that i never took the car out of reverse if i drive (laughs) so i drove my car and the trailer luckily the boat wasn't totally hooked up yet to the trailer straight into the water and me and my nephew had to escape out of my sunroof as the car was filling with water. And then my father was able to pick us up in the boat. Uh, definitely the scariest time I ever had on the water. It's a nightmare. And they cost me a lot of money because the <laughs> car, was, car was a total loss, totally sunk in under a minute. Uh, just really glad to be alive, I guess. So that's my worst fishing catastrophe. Uh, thanks so much. I love the show. Thank you, Dave. And if you're not already following Wisconsin Outlook on YouTube, you should be following it. Dave's an active member of our community and makes great stuff. So that's uh, Wisconsin Outlook. <laughs> that's an awful story. Sounds really expensive. I wish my Jeep would, would go in the water, though. I hate my car. Hey, everybody, it's Crappy Hippie, your tree-hugging redneck from eastern Kansas, and I just have to jump in on the contest. Heck, I know I can't win, but fishy disasters, you can't fish as long as I have and not have a litany of fishy disasters. Um, So I kind of broke it down into categories, and um, in this one, we're going to just call it getting stuck. Um, I've got several of these stories, but here's two of my favorites. One was when I was a kid, and we were like 16, 17, we borrowed my buddy Andy's mom's car to go walleye fishing and that was a bust and then we tried to take this um, rather dubious tractor trail down to a crappie spot that another member of our group had told us about that we just you know had to go and even before we turned down this this quote-unquote road I was like this is not going to work guys this is not going to work but, but one guy kept insisting that the crappie were there all we had to do was show up so uh, in our greed and our 
lust for glory. We we attempted it, and it wasn't long. Well, I could tell when he, Andy tried to turn around, and he couldn't get the car to respond in any direction, that we were in terrible shape. And I said, back straight up. But by that time, it was it was no go. And within minutes, we were buried all the way up to the doors, had to get out, in and out the windows. And yeah, we're getting mud everywhere. So he's like freaking out. Um, had to walk over a mile to a farm, got this really nice guy. He got his truck. He came down, tried to pull us out. His truck wouldn't pull us out. So back we went to the farm. I rode with him, came back on a tractor. Of course, that took a while because the top speed of a tractor is like, you know, 12, 15 miles an hour. Uh, but the tractor, it was about a 300 horse Ford, I think, or, um, uh, really doesn't matter what kind of was a farm all, I think. But anyway, um, good old IH, but, uh, it was a good tractor. It pulled us right on out. I insisted we give the guy, you know, some money. We gave him 10 bucks. Uh, Andy was mad because he wanted us all to pay to have the car, you know, fixed up and cleaned out and, and all that. And, uh, you know, we, we had a little left for that, but, you know, nothing left to eat, uh, on the way home and, and, uh, it came home, uh, hours late, uh, bleary eyed and, and, uh, head to toe mud. But the one that was probably the most significant to my life was the time, um, I took Kathy fishing. Kathy's my wife of 36 years. And we were not married at the time. We were still dating, and I wanted her to love fishing like I love fishing. And uh, so I found this spot. It was down a gravel trail. Um, the point was gravelly so it wouldn't uh, get her muddy and all this. And, and everything looked fine. I mean, it had rained, you know, a number of days before, but the trail seemed dry. Everything was dry. We're driving along in our old 67 Buick. And right under this cedar tree was a puddle maybe 10 yards long. I don't even think it was that long, maybe five yards long. And I just kind of sped up and started to go through it, and it was bottomless. I mean, we got in the middle of it and just stuck bigger than anything. And, of course, it was right under the cedar tree. So the cedar tree's boughs are on the top of the car. I'm having to squeeze under there to put stuff under it. I'm having to squeeze under this wretched cedar. Every time I went to jack it up to stick stuff under the tires and anyway, we took three or four tries sticking stuff under the tires driving off the jack just to move it you know five yards and get it out of this mess and there was a little strip of meadow um, on either side of the road a full meadow on the one side so we were able to turn the car around and, and get on out of there but no after after over an hour of uh, rescuing ourselves she was no longer um, in love with the idea of fishing and although she loves pretty much everything about fishing she doesn't like to go which is pretty crazy, but no more crazy than her hanging on to me for three and a half decades rather than dumping me right there on the spot. But I guess incompetence does have its charms. Anyway, those are my fishy disasters getting stuck big time. This is Crappie Hippie, your tree hugging redneck from eastern Kansas saying tight lines and valentines and be careful out there. We will, Crappie Hippie. And again, we can't tell you how much we appreciate having uh, Crappie Hippie be a part of this show. And you can you can support him by listening to this show and finding out what he's been up to. He's really, really good time. He's got some really big news coming up soon, too, but I'm not going to spoil it for you. Here's next call. Hey, Clay. My name's Tobias, and I'm calling from Hi, Saco, Tobias, Maine. From Saco, with Maine. my biggest fishing disaster. Uh, this past year, me and my buddies were up in northern Maine, musky fishing. Uh, it was late in the year, or later in the year, uh, and it was cold out. And I had my boat slide off the trailer and sit on the outboard with the nose pouring in the air. It was uh, quite the scene. Everyone knows you don't hook the boat before you back into the water, but this one time I did, and it bit me. It was uh, 22 degrees out, and we had fished the afternoon before, and my bunks turned into skating rinks. So as soon as I went to get in the boat, I grabbed my buddy back it in, and I just floated the boat off nice and easy. Um, and as soon as I put one foot on the fender and went to jump in the boat, it just slid right off. Well, and that is my biggest fishing disaster. Well, thank you, Tobias, from Saco, Maine, with Sherry, for sharing that. And thank you, everyone, for calling in with your biggest fishy disasters. And the winner of this prize package, you ready? Here it goes. I don't have a drum roll sound effect, so you're going to have to just pretend. The winner 
of our Fish Nerds prize package for the biggest fishy disaster is Dave from uh, Wisconsin. So, Dave, look forward to seeing your stuff coming in the mail. And if you haven't got your decals yet from last month, um, you know what? Just enter the next contest, and this time get your address right. If you haven't gotten them, it's probably because you didn't give me your address in a way which I can understand it. Um, so this month's contest is your biggest... Uh, lucky thing that ever happened or a stroke of luck while fishing or biggest positive thing. Give something more positive for St. Patrick's Day here. 607-378-FISH to enter. And when you enter, you call us up. Beep, doop, boop, boop, boop. You say your name nice and clear. Hi, I'm Clay from New Hampshire. My biggest fishy uh, win or luckiest thing that ever happened while fishing is I was fishing and I hooked a a hundred dollar bill. I, I, that didn't happen to me, but pretend. And then take a breath at the end of your story. Make it a good story. And then very slowly and clearly leave us your address in the way it might be written on an envelope. Like as if somebody like me, an old grumpy dude, has to write that on an envelope. Don't start with your zip code. Don't start with your street address and go to your zip code. Back to your street address. All in order, as if you were going to mail a letter. Put it on there. Can you tell? <laughs> this is one of my my pet peeves. Get it right, and we'll get it right for you here at fishnerds.com. Mail you out a uh, sticker. Um, there's a little bit delay in this week's stickers because I ran out, but our friends at Backwoods Graphics are printing some more as we speak, and I'll get them in the mail within a week's time. So... <clears throat> That's it. You've listened to a whole bunch of fish nerds when you should have been fishing. Uh, Big fat thanks to the crappie hippie, uh, to Anna on the Lake, Wally Pleasant for making our theme music, Diana's Bath Salts for our fish in the news theme, and of course Mike Steffen for making his donation to the fish nerds. No, he hasn't done that, but for winning $15,000 while fishing and telling us a story about it. Uh, So until next time, Follow the code of the fish nerd, spawn early and often. Uh, never trust a free lunch of strings attached and swim against the current every chance you get. Fish nerds out. Whether you're fly fishing in a stream, getting those ankles wet, or deep in the ocean casting nets, fish nerds. Fish nerds. Fish nerds. It's a podcast. Just for the house. Fry it in a basket or broiled in a pan. Eat it raw like you're in Siam. Fish nerds. Fish nerds. Fish nerds. It's a podcast.